me, Matt Fury, once again from Avid, thanking you for joining us here in the Avid booth. Our last presentation of the day is one I think you're really going to enjoy because this guy is a, not only is a tremendous editor, but he's a terrific presenter. Um, Frontline is just one of those juggernaut shows that's been going on for years, and just you know, telling great stories. And it's largely due in part to this man here, Steve Audet. Um, Steve's going to show you a lot of his techniques and tricks and, and, and just basically the overall structure of how an episode of Frontline comes together. So with that, Mr. Steve Audet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Woohoo! Okay. Um, all right. So what I thought first thought I would do is, uh, is everybody's your, your feet are tired, it's a good place to sit down, it's here. But uh, uh, I wanted to say that uh, you normally don't let me out of the edit room very much, so I'm really excited to be here and share some of the kind of things we do. The, uh, but the, this timeline is not usually what my timelines look like. They actually look a little more challenging. But, and we're going to get that in a second, but I want to just talk about sort of the size and scope of a typical front line. And it starts with a five-week edit. 300, 200 to 300 to 1 in terms of shooting ratio. So if I'm making an hour long program, which airs tonight, we're going to look at media that of tonight's program. Uh, that's a 51 minute program. I have 300 times that goes of footage. So as a result, I work generally speaking in uh, standard depth. So we shoot in 4K, two camera uh, most of the time, transcode that to AMA, transcode that down into um, a drive, about 1.7 terabytes for every documentary I do at standard standard depth resolution. I work at 4 to 1, which is good enough resolution to see mouth flap, but not necessarily so big to really be a problem. So I just want to give you a kind of a scope of that. Um, make sure I cover everything. Five weeks. Okay. Now, so first thing, so for all managing all that media, I want to start off with by looking at the project window first. And, then, and how we organize it at Frontline is basically, you can see it up there, how we organize this is based on the importance uh, to us in the edit room. Everything in making a documentary happens in the edit room. So, you know, we have five to seven people working on a team. They're all feeding myself and the director who says with me or myself and the director is not. So the most important thing for me are these top two bins, the tr uh, sequences and transcripts. Now sequences um, start off uh, pretty small. There's, so when I, you know, we make a new sequence every week, or sometimes I make new ones as I go along if I'm making big changes. But you see, so it starts at 17 minutes. But even a 17 minute um, sequence, uh, to me, is pretty com complex. This is the first 17 minutes. You can see it's already got 23 tracks of audio. It has eight or so tracks of video. The reason why I do that is because I'm always fine cutting. I never want to be in a situation where I'm assembling a documentary. I want to know exactly what the story is. So for me, I'm really working in scene by scene as I go along. So I start to understand what the, what the subject matter is in my story, what the rhythms of my story are. So we, so it starts off at, um, at uh, this size, and then it jumps quickly to, you know, over the course of the video. It goes up to over an hour. Now, because the final sequence is over an hour long, let's give you a sense of what that looks like, too. We have to cut it down. It's too, this is too long. So you see already the complexity we're talking about here, right? Lots, a lot of, a lot of work going on here. The process is then it's an hour long. You got to bring it down to time. That takes most of the five weeks. Bring it down to time. You want to make it sure it's as, as sharp as it can be. So final front line looks something more along the lines of. Uh, this. Now, the next thing I want to do, I would like to do with you, is go over some what these tracks are. Sorry, I, 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 my sketch got quickly set. My settings didn't come up. I want to maybe change that. Uh, the, so, come on, going back. So settings. So here. So what I have is I, I have the first audio. The first track is audio for the interviews, right? So whoever's talking there. Um, second track, second two tracks are going to be used for what I call an audio fugue. An audio fugue is what, sort of like the uh, modern day version of a Greek chorus from classical theater. It's sort of like, you know, in the old days they used to have this little theater on the side where the ten or five, ten men would stand and like, like yell out as the play was going on. This is what this audio fugue is for me. It's basically the chattering class of the 24 hour news cycle. Washington. 2016. That summer, Donald Trump came to do something he'd been avoiding. Clinch the Republican nomination. So the idea is, is that I am, I am. Uh, it's a feud because I'm taking all these sounds, these little snippets from the newscasters or radio people, or some now including the web, 
um, and uh, overlapping them and weaving them in together so you have that it's a, it's a given impression. There's no, no actual content here, it's just to give you the impression that we're talking about um, uh, the, the, the election. It's a way of it's a way of reminding people that because I don't remember how there were 17 people running for the Republican nomination of president. I mean, that's a long time ago for me, especially in this age of Trump. So I, I, I you know, so it's good. Now the other thing you'll notice instantly is I have an EQ on here. Next to your beer. EQ I had is actually very, it's very simple. I just I just go up to the uh, tools EQ. Select the track, I gotta make sure the track's like, and then I just select the, a preset all the time. And the reason why I do that is because I want this little uh, audio view to sit in the upper register of the available audio I have, right? So if, if the bass and the music is taking up the lower and the low end, and the voices are taking up the middle, I, what I try to do is create this little area on top for the audio fugue, so that's why they get the EQ. So they can be on top of the sort of sonorous voice of Will Lyman. came to do something he'd been avoiding. Has clinched the Republican nomination. Meet with the Republican establishment. Well, now, so a little inside baseball here. You see this little pink clip down here? Every single film I've ever made has that clip in it. It's, it's, a, little, it's a little piece of uh, sound that I always put over a, a helicopter sound. And I do that because they don't allow editors to have um, uh, open in the opening credits. So it's it, I'll maybe raise it low here real quick. Or can we play this again? I'll play it again. Can we play it loud? So if you're listening to ever film that I've made, listen for those because I, I hide them in there like little Easter eggs. So for people who know that on their cutter, they know that they're going to be living in there. Okay, bring it. Back. We can bring that back down. Okay, so the other thing I want to do, I do is I add, um, I'm just going to bring it, make this a little bigger. Come on. Oh. I add AAX, which I'm a huge fan of, uh, which I thought I would see here, which I don't see. A little larger? There they are. Okay, so for the, and this is important, uh, and, and everyone is, you know, this is one of the great things about Avid. You can add these things on the fly, real time, and they just work. No rendering. I mean, you know, it's like, I, I, have, I have a dear friend who we used to work on Final Cut, God bless his soul, and, uh, and now he's moved over to Premiere, and all he talks about is all the time he's rendering. I mean, I, 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 I hardly render anything. It's rendered now just to make sure we have good playback, but while I'm working, I'm just going for it. Yep, but so, but part of that is to add these three elements to the sound. So here's, this is what I add. This, I just clicked on the EQ button right here and it called up the audio track uh, window. You see that okay? I just wanna make sure you can see that. And what I do is I, is I roll off the, uh, the low end and I roll off the top end. The only real reason I roll off the top end of an interview is because in case there's any kind of new, uh, noise in the room, I just roll that off so you don't hear it. But it, it's, it stays on that track. So if, as long as I'm doing track management, pretty, doing my track management pretty good, then all of the interviews have that EQ all on track one throughout the whole piece. I only have to do it once, right? I get it right and I go. The next piece that I always add is a, is a compressor. So I, I add the compressor to, um, so that I can, because people who are talking, generally speaking, do not, see that coming out? Okay, uh, so when he's talking, the problem is when they're talking, they, they have a range of voices, especially in interviews. So the, the compressor allows me to kind of squish that up and keep them on top. Again, it's about managing the audio. I don't know about you guys, but my inner room is basically a cube. And so all the standing waves start bouncing around and all you can hear is the bass. This is a way to kind of make sure that I'm keeping the audio as clean as I can for the screening. Nothing is worse than having your uh, uh, executive producer say, can you raise the volume? And you know that raising the volume just means it's gonna get bass here, it's not gonna get more clear. Right, so, so I run, so I, and I also run that compressor and so if they can talk quietly, it automatically, I have a mute on, here it is. We had no interest in coming to see what was going on in Washington and to get the endorsements and to meet these people because 
You see how it doesn't kick in as the Putin had to get the endorsements and to meet with these people because see it didn't kick in when he brought, dropped his own voice down to get to the view to listening purposes. We all heard it just like it was the same level. So I add that in. The last thing I add in on my uh, dialogue track is a de-esser. It's just a little something just to knock off the. It's really interesting coming to see what was going on in Washington and to get the endorsements and to meet with these people. You see that acting out right there. So this is not, I'm not mixing here. I'm not trying to pretend I'm Pro Tools. I'm sending this to, when I'm done to the mixer and they're gonna do all their magic to it. But this is me in the room to get to yes. The, right, as a doc editor, your whole point is to get the executive producer to say, I love it. And that's intimidating to be very challenging, okay? So that's part of the process. The, um, th by the way, this, uh, this little, what I call the ABC setup of EQ, uh, uh, compressor, and denoiser is on the Avid blog site. Go to the Avid blog, which is a great resource for editors. And this is not sales. I'm not doing this as sales. I'm saying it's editor to editor. Go there and read, look for the um, audio dialogue EQs. It's in there, and it's really fantastic. I just, I mean, I, I would tell you the settings, but honestly, I have to be tell you I don't remember what they are, because every time I boot up a project, I go to that website, boot it up, read it, and put them in. So but that's what they are. The other big, uh, I also do that with the narration track, as you can see down here. Narration is Will Lyman, he's got a huge voice, he's one of the greatest voices of the, uh, Washington, 2016. I mean, just think about the money this man's making. Now, he would confront the party leaders he had attacked during the primaries. Let's face it, he would. So, so here's, I just let's play this real quick. Here's a little. Let me change it. So the two audio future in there and saying they had a little bit of noise, they're kind of like sassy, they go in and then Will comes in with this real serious voice and tells you what's going on. Now, below this, by the way, are sound, sound effects. Traffic, siren, siren galore, right? I like siren because anyone, I grew up in D.C., so uh, for me, anyone who has been in D.C. and spent any time there knows that it's like siren, siren all the time. So I'm always adding siren to D.C. <laughs> B-roll. It's like, you know, urgency. Oh yeah, everyone's self-important. But you can see that on tracks anywhere, so let me, I'm gonna continue my track. So four is the narration. Five is, um, is uh, what I would call sync audio for uh, any given B-roll. So while this guy's talking. <laughs> Do I? Good morning, everybody. I so, would like to walk you through. So that goes on five. Then any and, and six if it's a dual mono. So, so anyway, everything from seven no, down to uh, 21 is um, sound effects, sound design. I do a lot of that, and here's why. In documentary, most people are gonna look out on the screen just like this one, flat. All, in fact, all TV, even though some of, you, some of our friends here are experimenting with 3D, all TV is flat, right? 2D. The only three true 3D element in any film or, or television program is the sound, right? Because, and that's why I spend so much time on it. It's because if you're sitting on the couch, there are a lot of distractions. And the sound is going to be the thing that's going to make it be the immersive experience. It's going to pull your subconscious out of the, um, off the couch, through the screen, and into the world you're building. With the sirens and the um, chattering class. So that's why I spent all that time. And the bottom three tracks are music. Again, on the music track, I give it a, a real big roll, roll off and a little boost to the mid range. I don't do that because. Um, I'm trying to mix this music in. I'm doing that to fight the standing waves in my room. I'm also doing it because my mixer happens to have, um, love the bass. It, it's all about the bass. So uh, I had to try to kick it back a little bit. Because if, with all that bass in, that leaves, that takes up room in my in available audio space, right? So it makes it so I have less room to work with in terms of dynamic range of audio between talking person, the uh, Greek chorus, or any kind of sound effects I do. So I just roll that right off on the bass on that thing. Okay, so we talked about some audio things. The next thing on my uh, project here is uh, transcripts. Now we just talked a little bit about them. Um, these are all the transcripts. These are stock transcripts and interview transcripts. Look at them all. This is for an hour long documentary. I have all this transcripts, right? Each one of the, these are interviews from people. Some of them are reporters, uh, some of them are congressmen, some of them are senators. Each one of those interviews is anywhere from an hour to two and a half hours long, okay? And they're transcribed uh, and sunk up. So who do I want to use here? Let's go to Lewandowski. 
So this is how I set it up. I try to keep, because I end up sometimes with a lot of windows, I keep it very narrow. I mean, you can have this window as wide as you want, but when I'm making the trans, when I'm making the trans, uh, when I'm bringing it, importing the transcript in, I make it narrow so that it doesn't take up so much room on my desktop. But the greatest thing about it is, let's, you can search anything on this. So let's for yucks and giggles, let's do, let's do script city, current, whole word or not, doesn't matter, and we'll do Easter. If I spell it right, boom, there it is. That fast. He's going to say Easter when I click on this. It'll replace them by Easter. Okay, easy peasy lemon squeeze. We've done this a hundred times. Right. So, I mean, try to think about doing that without script sync. It, what tape is that word Easter on? Right? What time code? I don't know if any of you remember the back in the days we had three quarter inch and you were shuffling up and the producer would say, no, no, further, 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 further. No, 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 back, 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 back. Now there's none of that, right? So you just go boom and they say it. So that's, so I want to show you, if I quickly uh, do this real quick, I'm going to open up something here. I want to show you some of the work pro, um, not this, going, hide me, boom. On my drive, I have a PDF. I want to show you. I work. We work in Final Draft, but I realize this machine doesn't have it, so I use the PDF. So for me, for example, what, um, if I'm looking for something like, um, uh, let's say Frank Lunch, right? The Republican Party said it was, wasn't ready for him. I'm just going to select that. Go back to the Media Composer and go to Find. I'm, I'm going to say Scripts in Project. I'm not going to open up his project. I'm going to just paste that in from the script. So that's the script I'm handed at the beginning of the day. I'm just copying and pasting into things. I don't even have to say that was once, right? Boom. It, only, it calls up anybody. Look how many words it had to match, right? And if I click on this, he's once, is good, assuming this, he's online, is going to say, oh, come over here, baby. He's going to say, the Republican Party establishment was never ready for him. Boom, how fast. So that's how you can build a hour long or 90 minute long documentary in five weeks. Right? I'm not wasting any time searching for content. The same is true, by the way, for, um, I'm running out of time already, I can't believe this is good. I hope it's been, been good so far. Same is true, by the way, for, um, it, um, uh, 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 what's this called? Uh, inter, uh, when the president or someone talks, right? You don't have to like, we find someone. You, oh, this is pretty good. Right, so you call up their script, you bring it over, you go down, you find a certain word, and boom, and, and that's and this person talks. But the great thing about it, this is a group clip. Look how many cameras I got. So at any given time, if I'm cutting section to section, I have a group clip that I've sunk to this transcript, right? You try to do that on another NLE, just think about it. Let's go try, it's impossible. This is where you really save time working on the meeting of This is why this is still the, absolutely the greatest device ever made. Okay, so the other, next thing I want to show you is the sort of advanced, um, if I can, three minutes. I'm going to show you a couple of advanced uh, techniques with script sync. And that is basically, I'm going to call markers here, tools, markers. Used to be called uh, locators. Not quite sure why they changed it, but it seemed important at the time, I think, to them. So, one of the things. You can do, well, I'm going to skip that. Uh, okay, here's an important one. I do this all the time. This is a very smart man. His name is Dan Balls, and he's probably one of the, he's a, he's a great cherished, we should all read his stuff in the, in the Washington uh, Post. But he has a tendency to go on and on and on talking. So this bite, I'm going to put on the waveform here. This bite, he can take it, I thought I already turned this off, one second. This is his, his bite in total, that we're going to listen to now. So he's going to say Republican Party, but he's not going to stop talking. Uh, who's going to lead this party? Who are the people who are going to stand? Right? Who's going to lead this party? That's where I want him to end the sentence. Not who's going to, I don't know. I only have time for you to say who's going to lead this party. But I don't need the rest of it. And, but he, he's too tight on himself. Like, there isn't a, a little point of pause. Well, what we do is we match frame. We then go to, we go uh, find script. It goes, finds the script for us. That's a little avid bug. You then go Apple find, and you type in P-A-R-T-Y period space on the current script. And boom, find, it finds it. 
to find the next one because I know which one I used. You can see how many times it does it. Maybe one, there it is. Whoops, backwards one. Use that one, right? So you just go through and you find the one that works, and I happen to have it here on the desktop in the, in the thing. I found one, cut it in. Now I can actually put it right on his in his mouth. A new clip, new this clip. So now he says Republican Party. We need this party. End of sentence. Party period, not party comma. Right? So that way you can truncate down these bytes to manageable size. I mean, part of the interest here, and the reason why you would do this is because documentaries are, cannot be long, right? The long, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever been to uh, uh, some of the theater, theatrical documentaries that go on and on and on and on. That's because they're trying to make these sound bites. They haven't figured out that you can actually truncate them down in an effective way. And I don't know about you, but, you know, this is, I've said this before, but when you're watching a long form documentary, one of the things you don't want to have happen is, is, is to get a bored audience. I mean, the mind cannot absorb what the butt cannot endure. You know what I'm saying? So you, try, you have to actually kind of help your audience. This is for the audience. So another thing I want to show you real quick, and then I'm done. I'm done. Okay, that was it. Thank you very much. Amazing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to show you. Next time. I'm here tomorrow, too. I'll be quicker. Tomorrow morning. If you like that, we got more to show you tomorrow. Thank you.